Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third and last day of the Women in the World Summit. One of the things that I love about this event is the fantastic mix of countries and generations that come to it. Some of our youngest summit attendees are in the audience today, and I think that these future leaders deserve a shout out. Hey, ladies of the Young Women's Leadership School, where are you? Over there? <laughs> Welcome. And a big hi to the students of Newark, New Jersey's Dr. E. Alma Flag School. How are and hi to the women of UPenn's Wharton Business School and Harvard's Institute of Politics. You're never too young to take your place in the fight for a better world, and we're very happy to have you with us. The women of impact who make this event great year after year come from all corners of the earth, 23 countries this year alone, and we're very grateful that they made the trip. Some very powerful things were said on this stage yesterday, just a few of them I remember. Former First Lady Laura Bush, I want the next president to be someone who cares about women in Afghanistan. I wonder who that could be. Hmm. IMF Managing Director Christine Lagarde said that women still need skin as thick as an old crocodile to make it to the top. And then she added, but I hope very much that we can take off that croc crocodile skin and be normal human beings without having to shield against horrible attacks, below the belt punches, and all the crappy stuff, frankly, that abounds at the moment. Masi Elanijad, the fiery creator of My Stealthy Freedom, Women in Iran, she told us, are breaking the law every day just to be ourselves. And I'm a master criminal because the government thinks that I have too much hair, too much voice, and I'm too much of a woman. Professor Mary Beard from Cambridge, speaking about nasty comments about her looks that were made in a TV review, told her critic, what you're doing is you're looking at a 59-year-old woman. This is what 59-year-old women look like who've not had work done. And Mindy Kaling on women in Hollywood. There's a cottage industry in Hollywood, she said, for women's apology gifts, flower arrangements, ice cream, puppy parties for demanding respect. I'm sorry I demanded respect at that meeting. Here's a puppy party. Love, Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> and Planned Parenthood president Cecile Richards, one of my personal heroes. I'm just so sick of men telling us what to do with our bodies, and I would include Donald Trump in that category. <laughs> So we're wrapping up today with another lineup of compelling voices from today's front lines and headlines. And joining us, another of my heroes, the general pattern of hunger, Earthrun Cousin, executive director of the World Food Program, who deploys over 10,000 people to the world's disaster. She is truly awesome, as you will find. Ajay Bonga, the innovative president and CEO of MasterCard, who's telling us about a fascinating initiative that he's uh, helming that changes the lives of women. We're gonna learn about the unbelievable struggles women face in Central America and why they're fleeing to this country. Chairman and CEO of PepsiCo Indra Nui, one of the rare women running a Fortune 500 company, and Anne-Marie Slaughter, CEO and President of New America and best-selling author, are gonna get into it about the battleground of work-life balance and how the workplace can be changing for women. And we'll meet an amazing young woman who didn't let anything stand between her and her dream of becoming a professional squash player. We'll look into the future and learn how some of the world's leading female technologists are working today to solve problems in a way that seems the stuff of science fiction. And we'll take a look back to remember the infamous Anita Hill hearings with Kerry Washington, who soon plays her. Finally, we'll close with the great Meryl Streep, a longtime Women in the World friend who's been with us from the very first summit in 2010. She's going to give us a, leave us with a call to action. Special thanks go to our generous sponsors who share our belief that lasting change can start with a poignant human story. Our presenting sponsors, Toyota and Merck. Leadership sponsors, MasterCard, Microsoft, Flex, and the Rockefeller Foundation. Supporting sponsors, the Ford Foundation, PepsiCo, Thomson Reuters. And we're so grateful for the support, too, of AARP, the Aidan Dogan Foundation, Land's End, and the Tory Birch Foundation. And finally, thanks go to the New York Times, our partner in taking these summits all over the world, including London, Delhi, and forums throughout the US. Let's give all of these great supporters of women in the world a big hand.
one just small piece of housekeeping. When we break at noon, take a few minutes to visit the lounges hosted by Toyota and Merck to learn more about what they're doing in philanthropy, which is really incredible to see. And be sure to visit the Women in the World Boutique, which Tori Birch has brought to us. It's curated by the International Folk Art Alliance, and they've selected some beautiful pieces, jewelry, bags, accessories, and all of these pro proceeds go back to the women artists who made them. And now let's begin. Let's begin with a woman who built a fashion empire on values that never go out of style. My dear friend and co-host, Diane von Furstenberg, talks to New York Times Chief Revenue Officer Meredith Coppett-Levine about the women who shape and inspire her. Roll that video. <laughs> 